sonoluminescence has been known about around about 80 years, and it certainly has to be one of the weirdest phenomena out there. But what is it, how does it happen, and what actually might be the mechanism behind it? Well, like bioluminescence, it's the production of light, but instead of using chemicals produced by a living organism, in this case the light is produced by sound, but not just any sound. The sound in this case causes a bubble to collapse or surrounded by a liquid, most commonly water. In order to understand what's going on, we need to take a closer look at what a bubble in a liquid actually is. A bubble is a pocket of gas trapped within the liquid. In order to take up as little volume as possible, the bubble of the air assumes the shape of a near perfect sphere. That way, the pressure of the liquid on all sides is fairly evenly distributed and the surface tension of the liquid holds the bubble in place. A gas bubble, normally much lighter than the surrounding liquid, will float up towards the surface of the liquid, but all the time it's on, under substantial pressure from the surrounding liquid. Now if the pressure is unevenly distributed, or the surface tension is somehow disrupted, the bubble can collapse in on itself before rebounding back again, the bubble is restored. This can even happen several times with a bubble bounce. Now this disruption can be caused by sound waves of sufficient intensity to then cause the bubble to collapse very rapidly. And as it collapses in itself, because of the massive pressure, there's a great deal of energy involved in the collapsing process. This energy can heat up the gas to temperatures that are greater than the surface of the sun. Quite how hot is still under immense debate. Now, before you try beginning to create your own light creating bubbles. In order for this effect to be created, these bubbles need to be tiny, way too small to be seen with the human eye. It's related to the inverse square law, so that the larger the bubble is, the greater the volume in it, proportion to the surface area. Along with this, the burst of light lasts again only for a tiny fraction of the second, so you need a very fast camera to capture the light or some other form of detector. Another curious factor about the lights created by this fact is that depending upon the actual elements that go to make up the bubble, different wavelengths of light are actually produced, most of it coming in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. The light can also have different levels of intensity, again depending upon the various elements that are within the gas in the bubble. All this, however, leaves us with a big question of what's actually going on to create this light? This question has yet to be fully resolved. However, we can make some deductions about the process. Because the light is different depending on whether it's, say, argon, neon, helium, or whatever other gases are inside the bubble, there must be some relationship between the different elements and the increased levels of energy, which then go to generate the light as a way of releasing some of the energy. It's likely to form some kind of ionisation is actually going on, with the electrons involved in the release of the light. But there could be either something going on the quantum level or even some form of nuclear reaction has been proposed. All this goes to show that bubbles are a lot more complicated than they look. Maybe other things like lightning also have more to them than first appears.